Many thanks again for joining us on the newsroom and the sad stories we're following. The federal government has said the Nigerian Education Loan Fund portal for eligible students would open in March. The Executive Secretary of Nigeria Education Loan Scheme Akin Today Soya will disclose this in an interview urge eligible students to register to access the fund. President Bola Tinubu on June 12, 2023, signed the Access to Higher Education Bill into law to enable indigent students to access interest-free loans to pursue their education in any Nigerian tertiary institution. The Nigerian Labour Congress has demanded 794000 as the new national minimum wage for workers in the Southwest geopolitical political zone. The Labour Union in the Southwest, through their chairperson of Lagos State Chapter of the NLC, Fumi Sasi, made the demand during a presentation at the ongoing public hearing of the three-way committee on national minimum wage in Ikeja, Lagos, on Thursday. Sasi said that the demand was jointly agreed on by all the members of the union in the Southwest. And the public hearing of the Thruway Committee on National Minimum Wage has begun in the North Central. The chairman of the Thruway Committee on National Minimum Wage, North Central Zone, is the president of the Trade Union Congress, Festus Sifu. The committee has the term of reference to consult all stakeholders on the issue of national minimum wage to consider the national minimum wage in the context of dynamics of the national economy and to recommend a realistic and practical national minimum wage to the government. And the Academic Staff Union of Universities, ASU, Yobe State University branch, have resolved not to participate in any postgraduate academic activities until the institution pays 145 million end academic allowance backlog. The group said the decision was to salvage the university from continuing on the wrong path of disregard for the laws and procedures of the university. And on business, the House of Representatives Three-Way Committee investigates in the implementation of corporate social responsibility by multinational off companies and other corporate bodies in the south-south region of the country have threatened to issue warrants of arrest on the headship of the companies that failed to honor their summons. The chairman of the committee, Honorable Obiageli Lilian Urubu, frowned at the failure of some major oil companies to attend the investigative hearing, which was held in Abuja. Urubu warned that she and the co-chairman, as well as the entire members of the committees, would not hesitate to deal with any organization that failed to respect the assignment investigative panel. And on Global C, Nikki Ailey ended a long, short challenge to Republican presidential frontrunner Donald Trump on Wednesday, ensuring the former president would be the party's candidate in a rematch with Democratic President Joe Biden in November's election. Ailey, the former South Carolina governor and Trump's ambassador to the United Nations, bowed out a day after Super Tuesday's open new tab when Trump beat her soundly in 14 or 15 Republican nominating contests. And finally on sports, in a rare encounter, heavyweight champion Tyson Fury and Anthony Joshua conveyed in Saudi Arabia ahead of Joshua's highly anticipated boat with Francis, setting the stage for a potential future showdown between the British rivals. Despite their long-standing rivalry, Fury and Joshua had limited interaction during the meeting, with Fury directing his focus towards addressing comments made by Ngamu regarding their previous encounter in October. And that's all we have on the newsroom. Join us at the top of the hour for more stories.